Hello world, it's Angelot. And I wanted just to make this quick video taking a look at something I noticed um, in the Senki diagrams I've been making and working with uh, colleagues on. And they had this weird sharp edges in certain configurations where it seemed like the Senkis were too squished together. So I wanted to play with First of all, recreating that effect, uh, isolating it from, you know, we had some pretty complicated uh, data sets and all kinds of other things going on. So observable is a great place to just um, recreate the problem in isolation and try to fix it. So here it is um, as we separate the two uh, nodes from each other, everything looks great. Um, but as they get too close, um, the thing is that this is a uh, single stroke with a stroke width. So this is some kind of artifact from SVG for some reason. My solution was to actually trace the path and then fill it with the gradient instead of stroke gradient here. And we'll take a brief look at the code for that as well as some other examples. Um, or seeing this in an actual Senki diagram example from the D3 um, documentation. This is the code. Um, it basically, the idea is that you pass it a link that comes from the Senki layout. So you can pretty much drop this in for the Senki link horizontal. So if we look here, this is using, this is actually just a shorthand I made um, for our link I set up. And this one, it, I believe, where is it called the function path? Oh, I define it here. So I grab it here first. I could actually make it more drop in. Um, So everything still works. All right. Um, there's basically some math that comes down to um, the way the links are constructed. So I will not look in this code at first, but we'll start here. Um, Cause this is also how I figured it out. Um, you basically have this path and then that stroke Right, so, and the path is being constructed by a Bezier curve. So if we look at, um, did I print it out? I thought I printed it out somewhere. Oh, there's the examples we'll get to. But I guess we can just do this. I mean, it's web uh, stuff after all. So this path, um, See this M and C is basically um, a command to move to the midpoint of the first, the right side of the first bar, and then draw a curve to the midpoint of the left side of the second bar. Um, and that's how that's made. So what I wanted to do is start at the top, instead of the middle, start at the top here, draw the curve down to there, the, um, the top of the second bar, then draw a straight line, then draw a curve back to the bottom of the first bar. Um, so we do that with D3's path, uh, which is pretty sweet. So it basically gives you something that's a lot like Canvas's um, move to or Bezier curve, but it will generate an SVG. Um, so it kind of unifies SVG and Canvas APIs in that way. So we move, I made some shorthand for like the source and the target X position, and then their top and bottom Y0 is the top, Y1 is the bottom for both the targets. And then, right, so we move to the, the top left. And then the control point, it seems like it's halfway between these two is the X position for the control point, and then 
the y position of the control point is well it's just the top and the bottom of the source and the target I guess So we're just going halfway to here and then halfway to here. So those are the two control points and that's what you see here as well. X is halfway and it's the control point is at the starting point up there and it's at the, the bottom point down here. All right, so yeah, it draws those all those curves that I mentioned to get this shape, which does have somewhat of a funny like squeezed in shape, but I think as you'll see, in this demo, it does look a little bit different, right? Like these have a little bit more overlap and a little more, you know, carry the same width all through um, the diagram, more or less. It's like, you know, it's not per perfect, but so this gets a little squeezed in, um, but as you get smaller and you start to get um, more of these artifacts, these don't do that. Um, of course, you probably don't want it this tight with this graph. Um, but if you had a lot more data points here, and sometimes I've noticed that if the, um, the height difference between two nodes is too much, um, and they're both pretty thick, the more that is, the more this kind of stuff happens, right? Like these are sort of sheer, like the the y-axis, they're far apart. If they're closer to each other, you run into this problem less. So to some extent, it is a factor of the, the data. Um, and then the last thing for fun, kind of, was that I had some point I'd play with the, the control points and, and like if you offset them, so you can make this like really squiggly. Um, I'm doing it fast, it's kind of weird and fun. And then this is just a bunch of variables and a little trick for making the gradient. Um, I did have it written down down here. I was talking about earlier. This is the demo link I said. Um, also, I noticed that if you take change the this I imported from the Senki um, repo because of the spacing and the relative uh, heights of each of these bars, this problem doesn't crop up quite as bad um, for this, this justification, uh, like, I mean, justified. So there's always playing with those. All right, well, that was it. I'll publish these changes and share the video.